Hey guys, welcome back to San Antonio Living. Hair loss, you know, that's an issue that both men and women of all ages they face. But instead of trying to find a temporary fix, there are simple steps you can take to a permanent solution to get a full head of hair again. And the experts over at Limmer Hair Transplant Center are here to help. Long luscious locks are just a doctor's visit away. And why don't you come to the best doctor in San Antonio? We're at the Limmer Hair Transplant Center, and I'm talking with Dr. Jennifer Krejci. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Dr. Limmer really revolutionized the process. Before 1980s, hair transplants were going on, but they were very coarse and pluggy, what people think of when they think of hair transplants. But in the late 80s, here in this clinic, he started thinking of how he could do it better. And so he micro grafted the, the hairs, took them from the plug down to the individual follicular unit. So he actually coined that term, follicular unit. And uh, in 1991, he presented his work at the American Academy of Dermatology meeting. And so from there, it took off, and he basically taught the world how to do a better hair transplant. Are you nervous at all? No. Okay. The first thing they do for the surgery is that we plan out where we're going to do the grafting, where we're going to put their hairline, or where we're going to be planting the grass. So if you can imagine the blue Sharpie has your hairline. Does that look okay? Yep. Yeah. The most densely packed grafts will be right here. So they'll be packed the most dense here, mm -hmm. but that's going to enhance that whole frontal hairline. Then we look at the back of the scalp where we're going to take the hair from. So we mark out an area, we trim that area, we draw a template. So this is where we're going to cut this into the scalp to remove the grafts. So then once we have a, a strip of scalp, this is called the, the strip harvest technique, then that strip of skin is dissected down into those follicular units. So each graft is going to be either one, two, or three hairs inside. So it's very, very tiny. And then once the grafts are ready, then you use a needle. After this is anesthetized, both the back and the front, um, their needle is placed to make a tunnel, and then the hair is put into the tunnel. So one at a time, very tedious. It goes on throughout the day. So a lot of patients uh, are imagining something worse than how it is. I always say it's better than going to the dentist. <laughs> I haven't felt any pain whatsoever. So they are here. They're here all day, usually from 8 o'clock until 5 or 6 at night. It's a long day in a chair, but the skin is all numb. Uh, they're provided a sedative if they need it, but most patients tolerate it with just the local anesthesia. And so we keep them comfortable, and you just have to lay there for a long day. You can get up, you can stretch your legs, have a snack, have a drink, and then we start right back in. We always tell patients if they don't want anyone to know anything, probably a week off of work is enough. In the very first two days after the transplant, they'll have some soreness. There will be stitches in the back, and the, where the grafts have been placed will be a little red. Over the first week, it's mostly just taking it easy. Some people put a baseball cap on or hat and go right back to work, and no one knows anything has happened. So the hairs that have been planted are short, and they'll see actually a little bit of growth in that first month, but also some of them are going to shed. So some people get a little nervous because they think, oh gosh, there goes all my hair. But within the first three to four months, then you'll start to see little fine little baby hairs sprout where the grafts were, and then by six months, you have about an inch of growth, maybe an inch and a half, and the full uh, volume is not noticed until a year, actually. So it's a subtle process, which also helps to keep it sort of hidden from your, your friends and family and coworkers. Who's a good candidate for this, and at what point in their life is it good for them to come in and see you? So there's no one right age. Earlier is better. If you're noticing any thinning, you know, get in earlier because it might be that medical therapy is better for you. So we still use medications like minoxidil and finasteride. These are generic um, medications, both topical and oral. Some people wait until they're 50, 60. I've even done an 84-year-old who said, I don't know what I'm waiting for, but <laughs> I said, I don't either. I'm just going to have my I'm gonna look like I did when I was uh, 25 years old. So we do both men and women, and we do scalp hair, we do eyebrows. You do beards, mustaches. So any hair bearing area can be transplanted. And you can even transplant into scars. If someone's had a surgery for skin cancer or a birthmark and they have a bald spot on their, you know, hair bearing area, you can transplant that too. So there's something here for everyone who's in need of a hair transplant. If you need some help, just come out here and see Dr. For Jennifer Krejci. She'll take care of all your needs. All right, you guys, here's all the information you need. It's Limmer Hair Transplant Center. They're located at 14615 San Pedro Avenue, Suite 245. All the information, you betcha it's online at limmerhtc.com.